Welcome to Laminates.com. In this video, we will look at how to configure a site-to-site -site IPsec VPN on a Cisco router and ASA firewall using a certificate authentication. We will also look at the significance of using aggressive mode instead of main mode for the phase one negotiation. So in the lab setup, we have a firewall ASA FW1 on one side and a Cisco router R2 on the other side. And we're going to try to establish a IPsec site-to-site -site VPN between the VLAN 32 and VLAN 128. Both the FW1 and R2 ha already has the certificate install. So if you do on FW1, show crypto CA cert. Here we have the FW1.labminutes.com for the certificate and the trusted self-signed root certificate. And if you look at the R2 with a slight uh, command syntax difference with the crypto PKI certificate, R2 also has a certificate R2 with the name r2.labminutes.com install and the, trusted, the same trusted root CA certificate. Okay, in the start off, we're going to configure the FW1. Configuration will be very similar as far as the concepts um, and syntax to the pre share key when you do pre share key. First, we're going to define our crypto access list called VPN site and make sure you only permit IP to IP. So 172.16.32.0 with 255, 255, 255, 0. Going to 116.128.0, 255.255.255.0. Next, we're going to do IKE v1 or phase one policy configuration. Authentication, instead of doing a pre share queue, we're going to do RSA signature with the encryption of AES 256 with the hash SHA Duffy Hellman group 5 and a lifetime of. 86400. Okay, next we do crypto isocam. Disconnect notify. So the other side is notified when the tunnel is brought down. Um, and we're going to do crypto isocam identity. So if you want, if you do a different kind of or use different kind of authentication with this pre share key or certificate, you might want to leave it as auto. So it would know whether to use an IP or the certificate DNs for identity. So here it's just going to do auto. But you have a choice of just to do the IP address itself, or you can also force it to use host name. Okay, but most of the time, auto works fine. You just need to realize what gets sent across as far as the identity is concerned, which we'll take a look when we look at the debug messages. Here we're just going to leave it at auto. Next we're just going to enable IKV1 on the outside. Next we configured phase 2 IPsec transform set call ESP AES256 SHA with the ESP AES256 and ESP SHA HMAC. Okay, if you want, you also can clear the DF bit and specify the interface which is outside that we're using. Okay, now we step through the crypto map and this part is pretty much identical to the pre share key configuration with some with uh, one or two additional command which we will see in a sec match address we have a crypto ACL called VPN site okay and then we're gonna set Here with IKV1 uh, transform set. And P 
here. The IP of R2 is 222.10. Okay, you can set peer, you got you can set reverse routes, set security association, lifetime, kilobyte, 1024.000 with the second of 28.800, which is eight hours. Next, we're going to set. So, what else can we set? Security Association Trust Point. So, here we're doing certificate authentication. So, we have to associate Trust Point to the crypto map. And our Trust Point that we created is called LM root CA. Okay. And I don't think we've set PFS yet. So, we do that group 5. And we're just going to need to enable that on the interface outside. So let's see, show run crypto map. Okay, it looks about right. All right, so that's it for crypto map. Next, we're going to move on to the tunnel group. And here you have a choice. You can do it by name or by IP. Just to be safe, you're just going to do it by IP since we know that we're using static IP on both sides. So we can identify the peer by IP and IPsec land to land. With the IPsec attribute, here we repeat the trust point. Trust point with question mark. ASA is nice enough to let you know what trust point has been configured. You can even tap on it. So, okay. And another command that you might consider putting in is the peer ID validate. Otherwise, that's the, the chance by default is required, but sometimes it might fail your authentication unnecessarily. So, for peer ID validate without doing extra check or extra security, you can either do no check or you can do cert, which we will do here which is basically conditioned on if that is supported by the certificate itself. Okay, so cert. And last we're going to do crypto, going to get back into the trust point root CA. We know there's a known gotcha where the certificate, the key usage on the certificate issued by Microsoft Windows CA might not be acceptable to the ASA. So here we're going to do ignore IPsec key usage. So if you run into issues where you have an error as similar to um, something that said the, there's a problem with the extended key usage when you do a crypto or debug crypto CA when it fails at the certificate authentication then there's a chance that you might need these and if you especially if you're using Microsoft issue certificate. Alright so that should be it for now for the firewall one. Now we're gonna go to R2 and the configuration should be a replica but reverse. We'll make sure there's a route to from the R2 to firewall one with R2 having a gateway of 2221 name HQ VPN. Okay, next we're going to do crypto access list. Okay, too many C. Okay, access list. Permit IP in reverse order 172.16.128.0 with the reverse subnet mask. I say to 16.32.0. Okay, with the phase one crypto ISOCAMP policy 10. Encryption AES 256. And I'm assuming you guys have some familiarity with the IPsec configuration on the router. So I'm just going to go a little fast so we can spend more time looking at the debug at the end. Um, authentication RSA SIC with the 
Duffy Helmet Group 5 just to match and then lifetime to make sure 86400. Okay, thanks for the crypto IC camp keep alive 103. All right, so here's one thing we'll do a little differently. So by default, when the um, you can figure a certificate authentication on in ASA by default, it sends across that certificate uh, attributes without the subject names and OUs and everything. And by default, where there's a router or firewall, it will look for an OU to match the identity. So if you want to use um, out of the attributes for a certificate matching, then you need to define that yourself. So here we're going to do a crypto PKI, let's see, um, crypto PKI certificate map. And we want to match this instead of OU, we want to match the subject name of the firewall one. So we're just going to call it, uh, and also, uh, uh, yeah, and ask for the sequence as well. Here have your question mark. There's a few things that you can use this part of the certificate uh, for you to use for matching. You can use serial number, issue name, expiry on. Here we're just going to do subject name and we're going to be looking for a not only just any certificate, but our certificate that's been issued to FW1. Okay, so contain, no, CO rather. Okay, so we have that configured. We're going to use it in a little bit here. Next, we get into the crypto IPsec, or rather, ISACAMP, rather. Profile. So you get, in case, if you guys are not familiar with the IP, uh, ISACAM profile, um, you only need that under certain scenarios. There's additional config that you can do under ISACAM profile, or if you want a tunnel specific parameters configured, for example, keep alive, if you have a special requirement for sure, tunnel for keep alive, for example, or even self identity. So you can, based on per tunnel, you can specify a different self identity. So here for this particular configuration, self identity, instead of doing address, which is what we normally do, we're going to go FQDN. So fully qualified domain name, which is the identity that will be sent from R2 to FW1. Next, we're going to specify or associate a certificate trust point. And on this side, we also have a trust point called LM root CA. Um, for identity matching, match, instead of doing match identity, we will see in the debug in a second that the firewall actually sent the certificate DNs, which is a long strings of subject name and OUs and um, on the certificate parameters. So since we already have created a, a certificate map looking for specifically a subject name of fw1.labmins.com, we're going to utilize that. So let me scroll back up and that's our map name. Okay, so enter. It's just going to repeat keep alive so you know there's also a way to override that per profile. Okay. So crypto transform set uh, IPsec transform set ESP AES two five six SHA with ESP AES two five six and ESP SHA Edge Mac. Okay. To be consistent, we're gonna clear DF bit on this side as well. Right. Next, we get into the crypto map as always. It's pretty much standard config for IPsec crypto map. We call it VPN map. We would do match 
interesting traffic with an ACL call VPN HQ. I'm going to go set peer the IP of the firewall, which is 111.11. Set security association lifetime kilo. Uh, and second, okay, it's to match the other side, and you set transform set the one we created earlier. Set PFS, should do group five again, match the other side. So, what else can we do? Reverse route, let's put never hurts to put reverse route in there, and then we do set. Um, QoS uh, pre-classify and don't forget to associate that back to the ISOCAM profile we created which is let's see HQ ISOCAM profile all right and then associate crypto map to the interface. Okay. So at this point, we are leaving um, the default negotiation mode to a main mode. So we'll see in a second what's going to happen when we start bringing up the tunnel. So let me clear the screen on both sides and turn on debug. So crypto uh, debug. Crypto ISA 127. You can see it's 127 is just a debug level, so the higher the number, let's see, um, debug crypto ISA camp. Oh, it looks like the new one is IK EV1. Okay, you can do 1 through 255, so 1 will output the least amount of debug, 255 will pretty much output everything, which is maybe too much. So for the middle ground, just use 127. So debug crypto isocam as well. Now we're going to start our ping from a PC.32 and VLAN 128. Ping 182.16.32.1. Okay, and you can see how the tunnel starts to negotiate. Okay, so the ping succeeded, and we have a whole bunch of debug to look at, so let's step through that real quick. Okay, so our ping went from the R2 side to the firewall. So let's take a look at R2 first. So immediately match matches the HQ ISOCAM profile because we specify the peer IPs in the IPsec a crypto map and then tie that back to the profile so that's why I was able to pick the right profile to use. Let's go through this um, debug and say right here begin main mode and it sends the first packet to the ASA right here transition from main mode message 1 to main mode message 2 receives the packets back start looking through the policies it found one that's acceptable let's go back and forth now with message 3 and 4 it gets to the certificate authentication part of it because uh, since we have the R2 sending FQDN as identity, this is where we see FQDN r2.labnits.com being sent across. And in return, we receive the FQDN FTP1 with labnits.com. And you can see right here it says certificate map matches. So the certificate that the R2 received from the firewall one, it got matched to the 
HQ ISOCAM profile because we have that certificate map configured to look for certain attribute which is subject name and now it said authentication succeeded with message 6 and P1 complete or phase 1 completed. Okay. Now I'll take a look at the firewall one side of things. Just scroll down to where the certificate was exchanged. Okay, so since we have the IP address of R2 configured as identity of the tunnel group, and that's what is used, the firewall used to do the identity match with the IP 22210, it landed on the tunnel group 22210. Okay, so because we're doing main mode and we're using the IP address to match, um, it works immediately because IP address is always available. If you were to use, instead of defining a IP address for the tunnel group, if you were to define like a host name for the tunnel group, this wouldn't have worked because the host name would not, is not review um, in the main mode negotiation until it reaches the message five, where the initiator sends the identity or host name in message five, but the ASA needs to find some identity to match right at the beginning, which is message one. So that wouldn't have worked. In that case, you would have gone to an, an aggressive mode where the identity of the initiator is review right the first message. So if you were to use the host name for the tunnel group, you would have needed to enable aggressive mode on R2. Okay, so everything else looks good. And right here, I say phase one completed. And here, phase two completed. So pretty straightforward. That's why it says it's, if you have a static IPs on both sides, it's safer to use a static IP for the tunnel group to avoid the whole main mode, uh, aggressive mode uh, issues. So let's see what happens if we, instead of um, initiating a traffic from R2, we're gonna, sorry, we're gonna initiate our traffic from uh, FW1, FW1 site. So clear screen, let's go ahead and clear crypto ISOCAM and clear, let's see, clear SA, okay. Show, de uh, show debug, so, so debug, crypto, IKE, V1, C55. So uh, debug, crypto, SK. Okay, so now we can initiate our ping from switch one. So switch one, ping 172.16.128.4, sourcing for loopback 32. Okay, so that also works. Let's see what we have coming across. Let's let the debug kind of finishes up. Oh, looks like I enabled too much debug. That's, okay, so this is what it looks like if you if you enable uh, debug level two five five. So you get a whole lot of messages. Um, let me kill that. Let's see if I can kill that. There you go. If you do Control C, you can you can interrupt the debug. Um, let's try that over again. So instead of 255, I should have done 127. Clear crypto, ice camp, SA, clear screen. Let's ping one more time. Oh. Okay, looks like I forgot to turn on debug on R2. Let's clear that. Make sure, there you go. So enable debug, clear screen, clear screen, ping again. 
Okay. Now that we have the um, traffic being initiated from the firewall side, let's take a look how the debug might show up differently. So the first packet is being sent by the firewall and the R2 receives. So once the R2 receives that packet, let's see what happens. So we'll see right here, receive packet from 111.11. Okay, again, same thing, main mode. So we're doing main mode here. Then go ahead and check the transform set. Other way with message four. So as soon as you start message five, here's where the identity is sent across the encrypted tunnel. So since we, since we left the identity on the firewall side to be auto with the crypto IKV1 identity or ISOCAM identity auto. It knows that when you use the certificate authentication, this is why it will get sent. So this is the parameter, the DN parameter on the certificate. So this is right here. It said immediately goes to OU equal IT, is where the router is trying to match the identity. But since we have the, the certificate map configured, it landed on HQ iScan profile correctly. Okay, and then R2 send back its FQDN and the firewall is able to use the IP again to match it. So that's why we were able to have a successful ping. Okay, so just want to show you the different if you were to use the tunnel group, uh, the host name for the tunnel group name, this is what we have. Let's go ahead and clear that out. Go clear config. Okay, and instead of, let me copy that and bring up a notepad. Okay, so instead of IPs, we're going to do r2.labminutes.com. Okay, paste that in. And right away, when you do that, the ASA each of you a warning, and it says using the name and not IP address should be used when you do authentic uh, certificate authentication or an AN when you enable aggressive mode. Okay, so right off the bat, it gives you that warning. So let's go ahead and clear, make sure there's no, okay, clear crypto ice camp, say, and we're just going to concentrate on the the debug on the firewall side. So debug crypto ISO camp 127. Let's do a ping. Okay, so it looks like the ping succeeded and if you look through the debug here, the tunnel group matching doesn't occur until the certificate was received. Okay, and right here, it said the tunnel is landed on the group r2labminutes.com. Okay, but nevertheless, the connection was up and we can still ping it. Okay, so now let's see what happens if we enable aggressive mode on R2. Okay, just want to show you the difference in the debug. So go back to the profile, HQ, isocamp profile. And the way to initiate the aggressive mode is command initiate mode aggressive. 
Okay, make sure you clear crypto ICCAM and SA and go back to firewall one and enable debug 127. Let's do our ping again. Okay, we have a successful ping. Let's stop the debug, we'll scroll up. And here you can see the matching, the tunnel group matching happens much sooner or if before where the certificate was exchanged down here. And that's because the identity was review or reveal um, by R2 to firewall one right at the first packet. Okay, it should be clear if we enable. So let's do debug crypto ICAMP on R2 side. And let's see how that might be uh, different. Okay. Clear the screen and then do another initiation. Okay, stop the debug. Let's go through it on R2 side this time, which is where the connection is initiated. So right at the beginning, R2 starts sending its identity being FQDN name. And you can see right here, instead of MM, it becomes AM, which is a short for aggressive mode. So that identity was carried in the aggressive mode message one. And in message two, you get the identity back from the firewall. So you get the identity even before the transform, the ICCAM transform um, set is accepted. All right, so everything happens pretty early, but it's unencrypted though. So the, you don't even have the encrypted channel built unlike the main mode. So it's less secure as far as if somebody sniff off the packet, you'll be able to uh, see the identity that's carrying the, in the first two packets because you can see right here, the encryption suite doesn't really get negotiated and accepted uh, until the message two is already received. Okay, and then at the end, this is where the certificate authentication occurs. Consulting trust point. Okay, and eventually after the third packet, our messages, um, phase one succeeded, are complete. Okay, so with main mode, there are together six messages. But with the aggressive mode, although the negotiation happened faster, using three messages is less secure. Okay, so when you configure a site-to-site a -site VPN like this, if you use anything outside of the pre-share key or if you want to use identity outside the address whether it's host name, host name or the certificate attributes just make sure you understand what's being matched and what's uh, by which party and if there's a need for you to enable aggressive mode just to see the identity coming across earlier in the negotiation so it will be matching correctly to the, your profile. Okay, so that's it for this video. Thank you for watching Labinance.com. I'll see you guys in the next video.